So back with John. John Wood. Oh, go on, do your bit. Do your bit. Do your bit at the start of the video. So I like that bit. Hello, I'm JW. Yes, okay. I'm back here in Tresham College. With the students. So we've had a look in the first video, didn't we? You, you talked us through some of these, yeah. um, well, let's not use them antiques, but they're nearly there, aren't they? Uh, wiring Systems and Consumers Unit, and we're just going to bring it to life now with where we've gone from and to when we have a little look at some of these bits yeah. here, John. That was it. So, yeah, this is your uh, current metal type consumer unit. What's this Wilex one? They still make them. They do still make them, and we've seen the older versions out, yeah, how they've progressed. And, uh, Twin uh, RCD. Are you happy with those RCDs, John? Are you comfortable with the AC ones uh, now with a modern wiring system? Not really, no. no. The problem with those is that they were okay win their day, as which was basically a resistive load, but pretty much everything these days isn't a resistive load, and therefore the days of that type of RCD are pretty much numbered. Yeah, even today, one of my students brought a picture of a consumer unit in that they've been working on in the last six months, and it had AC RCDs. Yeah. And I said to him, "Describe the installation to me: LED downlighters yeah. and all the rest of it." So, yeah, that we, we we should be not even producing them. I no. would suggest we should be phase those out but a type minimum. But they're still making them, and they're still selling them. Yeah. Uh, what sort of distribution board do you fit in? Do you fit RCBOs or do you it's split RCBOs? RCBOs? Not going to do much now because I've. Uh not You're registered a anymore, so <laughs> very successful YouTube yes. channel and uh, website. That's I think right. we'll find, but yeah, it's RCBOs Hager usually. Okay, yeah, I'm, I'm a big fan of the new Hager boards, and they've called it the 18th edition board for marketing. But yeah. it introduces the fact they've put surge in a domestic board as well. And you, yeah. you know, in your video, suggest that do we have to put a surge protection device in a domestic dwelling? In theory, no, absolutely. Manufacturers, of course, would like you to put them in, of course, but they would, then they would, wouldn't they? Because they're selling the things, that's one of them. Yeah, the, uh, but price point for me at 60 quid, and if it's already in the board, yeah, it's not and, a huge thing. No, and your telly's worth two and a half thousand quid, yeah. and everything you plug in's, you know, an iPad's two thousand pound to a thousand quid yeah. now on it. So, and if you're doing the RCBOs, they're higher price anyway. So, in terms of additional cost, it's not a huge amount. So, it's no. two RCBOs basically. Have you fitted any search? I have not. Okay, so uh, would you do a video perhaps when you've done that for yeah. us? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, probably. Yeah, that's just good because you've done a few on site. I loved your vault drop one where you had. Was there a joint, a joint in the road had an issue? Did it? Yeah. And you it managed to get a really big vault drop when yeah. you turned the kettle on, didn't you? Or? Yeah, that one. It was where the every time you turn on fluorescent lights, they wouldn't switch on at certain times of the day because they had the old magnetic ballast. So right. the voltage was too low for it to strike. Okay. And then it turns out there's some fault in the road which they eventually came along and replaced. And did you help them find that by finding the fault in that house, or was it just a coincidence it you were was, in the two places? Well, there were several houses that actually reported it, so I thought, well, we'll get one of those, and uh, yeah. we did, so. But, but that vault drop thing's brilliant. I love that yeah. video. That okay. was huge. Yeah, it was <laughs> kind of wild as spec, just turning on the kettle, so. Yeah, it, yeah. yeah, massive drop. And you explained the calculation brilliantly afterwards. So we, we might find it in the future, if you do fit an SPD, you're gonna perhaps do a yep. little video, or at least a, a talk over of how you fitted it, et cetera. There is some, um, Issues about the distance, it can be away from the conductor length being half yeah. a metre to a metre, I think, isn't it? But they like half a metre, but it can be a metre, yeah. but half a metre, yes. Know, sort of, here's the rule, but we'll actually change it as well just to make it more confusing. Yeah, yeah, that's why my sure. video hasn't come out on it yet, John. <laughs> so when we're in the same position. And we're also in that situation where, so they're quite new anyway, so some manufacturers haven't actually got them yet, and some most of them have. And you said RCBO, so you're fitting RCBO, so we've got yep. two versions. Are you a fan of the miniature one, or are you still sticking yeah, with the I original ones? Yeah, I haven't done many miniature ones. I did some uh, fairly recently, but yeah, I, do, I like the miniature ones because there's just so much more space in the top of it. And you say C and the other. Some boards aren't too bad. It all depends how much height you've got, but some of them, you put this in and you've got like about half an inch above it, you can't even see to get the wires in there. So. Mm -hmm. And yeah, what, what somebody said definitely. to me quite rightly, because obviously we've got the combined miniature RCBO and art fault detection device, why didn't they just keep it this size and actually strap the art fault detection device technology yeah. on the top? So rather than taking it down a size and then trying to cram it in, why didn't they keep it the original size? And I went, I can't answer that one. It's yeah. a really good question. It seems obvious, doesn't it? It, it does. Don't, when someone states yeah. it to you, you think, mm, that was a really good idea that I didn't think of. Yeah, these are all uh, twin module, or in the case of that one and the... Uh, did the other day. Yeah, triple. That's a triple module. So we're back to double decker consumer units in the previous yeah. video. We're going to add them top and bottom because of just the Absolutely. sheer sheer well room that the uh, furniture is going to take up. Art fault detection, fan or no fan? I know Ninja's I'm not. Not a fan yet. Okay. Um, could be convinced otherwise, but uh, what we've seen so far, definitely not. Is that based on the fact you couldn't get one to operate? Partially. Okay, and cost? Well, yeah, cost as well. I mean, they're 200 quid sort of area. And the intention for the manufacturers is you have one per circuit for all the circuits. If you've seen the, I think it's Wilex have put up some lovely leaflets showing this 
a thing about this size with six circuits in, serves protection at the end, <coughs> AFDDs for six circuits. So you're talking about £2,000 consuming unit. I can't see that being a big seller. But they may come down in price. It's first technology is yeah. always dear. You think of the first mobile phone, the first flat screen telly, etc. Yeah. They're always big price, first curved TV, etc. Massive prices. Hopefully they'll come down. But it's not It's not that must to have purchase, is it? Uh, no. Oh, come, come into my property and if you swing a left there and look up, you'll see yeah. that I've spent £2,000 on my consumer's unit. It's not really got that Absolutely. swing with it, has it? Yeah, they just don't. Domestic, certainly. Most people don't care. They just want it to work. That's all they care about. Yeah. Absolutely. So it's going to be a hard sell. And the art fault detection device, I don't think, likes a ring final circuit. Do you know anyone else, John, that might not like a ring final circuit? Yeah, well, that could be me, actually, yeah. How about that, sir? <laughs> they're fine if they use what their purpose was, but the problem is that a lot of places now, they're putting them in, you're going to have like a ring for the ground floor and a ring for upstairs and a ring for the kitchen and a ring for the utility room, and it's like, what is the point of all that? Okay. Largely, you don't need it. And obviously AFDDs don't like them, so we've got an issue there that it doesn't like yeah. a serial arc on those. And obviously we know we've been testing them today. And I said to somebody messaged me before you came and said, I hope you're not doing ring circuit testing when, he, um, mm. when John arrives. And I went, well, we are. It's yeah. a, it's going to love that when he turns up. Unfortunately, it's a requirement to obviously test these ring yeah. final circuits. That's what we've been doing today. But you're quite rightly, you know, like a lot of people, not a massive fan of them for yeah. loads of reasons. I mean, when they were done, it was the intention was it was one for the whole house and spurs were part of the original design. So it's not as if spurs are some kind of thing you add on later. It was intended that you put one in the middle of the house and then your sockets around the edge, you actually put on spurs when it was installed from new. Okay. And that's where the it saves cable thing came from because it did at the time, because previous to that you just had individual radials going out from a central fuse box all over the place. So in that regard it does. But now it doesn't save cable, but it actually wastes cable in a lot of cases. And then you've got people say putting them in just for one room or two rooms or I've got my shed. I'm going to put a ring circuit in my shed with three sockets on it. So yeah. nonsense, really. And issues with losing part of the ring. So you end up to effectively having two radials fused at maybe 32 amps and yeah. the current carrying capacity of the cables. Are, it just becomes a minefield yeah. of problems where, and we discussed it today with the students, you lose a radial part way through the circuit. The customer is going to ring someone because part of the Absolutely. circuit isn't working, whereas obviously the issue yeah. with the ring doesn't. And even with rings, if you've got one and you've got all the loads stuck at one end of it, you can still overload the cable yep. just because you've got all the high loads, say, at one end near the consumer unit. So definitely not ideal. And I don't know if you saw it. I think um, Sparky Ninja did a lovely one about balancing ring circuits and which way around the current sky. Yeah. So again, that links in with that. Yeah, so that's that's really actually good. quite complex when you uh, dig into that. So <laughs> I'll leave it to you and uh, Mr Ninja, yes. I think, when it gets complicated. So um, RCD test labels, I've got one down. Have you seen a new one yet? Because they're really difficult. So I'd like to, be, to present you with a new test oh, label. Yes. Have you seen one, John? I have not. There you go. Uh, they yeah. are very difficult. Um, My good friend Matthew oh, yes. O'Dell on Site with Mac yep. managed to get me hold of one that says it needs to be yep, not pressed months. every six months where That's we right. didn't press it every three months beforehand. Yeah. Why at six months now? Is, uh, well, we weren't doing it every yes. three months. So if we do it no. six, it's obviously going to be done then, isn't it? I mean, if it's six months, there is a, you could say, well, if you test it when the clocks go back or something, that uh, at least it's a bit more memorable. But uh, yeah, six months now instead of every year. So I suppose you'll test your smoke detectors at the same yep. time, won't you? Theoretically. Making sure you change them every 10 years. That's right. That's absolutely, yeah. All absolutely. those things that happen, yeah. Absolutely. Do you recommend that when you go to an installation and check the smoke detectors for a 10 year date on them? Usually. Yeah, good. That's certain. a fair number as well. Yeah, that are miles out. Yeah. Absolutely. Again, of all the things in your house, that's one of the most important things, isn't it? Yeah. And you see them, and it's, you can tell a lot of times just by looking out there, they've been up there for 20 years. But They're yellow, know, just, yes. Yeah, yeah. Or painted over with emulsion and all other things that should never happen. But of course, they do. <laughs> Yeah, I've been to some, like, certainly the, the rented ones where you go there and it's like, oh, we just want this socket change. It's like, yeah, you did know your smoke alarms are grossly out of date and you did know this consumer unit is hanging off the wall because it's only got one screw holding it on the back and they just, in a lot of cases, don't care. But we do. That's the main thing, John. John. And with UCARE, I believe you've joined E5 as yeah, well. So we yeah, so we're, we're joint E5 members, yeah. uh, as are all the team electrical here, because we believe in the policy for E5, yeah? Yeah. Okay, and that's one that we follow as we've gone through. Are we, are we about there, John? Shall we, shall, we, shall, we, shall we end it my way again? Shall we try and do it? Yeah, we, we might as well, yeah. Okay then. So we hope this video, video has, has been, been some... <laughs>